Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to Practical Programming Channel. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with WebGPU graphics programming. In the last few videos, I explained how to create a 3D cube that is a very simple 3D object. In the next few videos, I will show you how to create several 3D wireframe objects, including sphere, cylinder, cone, and torus. A wireframe model is a visual representation of 3D object that is often used in computer graphics. It is created by drawing just outlines of the polygons that make up the object. Using wireframe model allows for the visualization of the underlying structure of a 3D shape. Since wireframe renders does not require lighting, depth stencil states, material attributes, and a texture, it is relatively simple to construct and faster to calculate. So, wireframe is often used in the cases where a high screen frame rate is needed. In this video, I will show you how to create a 3D sphere wireframe. To do this, we need to use the spheric coordinate system as shown here. Here the formula shows how the x, y, and z coordinates are related to the r, theta, and phi. These are the variables in the spheric coordinate system. To create a sphere wireframe, we started with the concept of longitude and latitude. This is also called the UV sphere model. The sphere can be constructed using the U segment and the V ring as shown here. You can see the U and the V line forms grays on the surface of the sphere. In order to create a wide frame for this surface, it is enough to consider just one unit grid, as shown here. This unit grid contains four lines. You can see two solid lines, two dashed lines here. We only need to draw two solid line segments. We only need to draw P0 and P1 and P0 and P3. This is two solid line segment because Two dashed line segment will be drawn by the other unit grids. This can avoid drawing the same line segment multiple times. If we run over all the grid, use this units, we can create the wide frame for the entire surface of the sphere. Okay, let's go to the programming part. Again, we will use the gate tool to clone the source code used in the last video. Here is the download link at the GitHub repository. From this link, you can download all the source code used in the last video. Now, let's open a command prompt window and run the following command. Git clone and paste this link. This will generate a WebGPU tool for folder on your local machine. This folder contains all the source code used in the last video. Now we want to change the name of the WebGPU tool for folder to GPU13. Rename and the CD into it. At this point, we are going to start. Visual Studio Code with the command code period. This is a Visual Studio Code interface. Okay, we can close this welcome page. Here contains all the source code used in the last video. Now open a new terminal window. And we use npm install command to restore store the npm packages. This installation process may take a while. 
Uh, please be patient. Okay, finished. Now all the installed package are stored in the node modules folder. Now from this uh, src folder, let's add a new TypeScript uh, file called wireframe.ts. This is a common file that can be used in creating wireframe for different 3D objects such as sphere, cylinder, torus, etc. Now enter the following code for this file. This file contains a new method called create wireframe. It is basically the same to the main.ts file we used in the last video, except that it takes wireframe data here as input argument. We then use this data to create a vertex buffer here. You can see vertex buffer. We use the wireframe data. Another change is uh, inside the pipeline. This is the pipeline here. You can see here we set a topology attribute to line list. And after this, we also remove the depth essential attribute from this pipeline because we join wireframe line segments by the line segments and we don't care about the order of drawing line segments so we don't need the depth essential attribute the rest of the code is the same as that we used in the last example now we can save this file and close it next we need to add another new TypeScript file in src folder. New file we call the math.func.ts. This file will contain the math functions used to create different wireframes. First, we enter a new method called sphere position to this file. Here is the code. P. You can see here, the input argument contains a center parameter here. This parameter lets you specify the location of the sphere. This method simply returns x, y, and z position, specified with the spheric coordinates, as discussed previously. We can then save this file and close it. Next, open the vertexdata.ts file from src folder, vertex. First, we introduce the spheric uh, position method from the mathfunk.ts file. Import from here position. And then we add a new method called sphere wireframe data. Here we need to introduce the vector3 module. Import vector3 from GL matrix. You can see this function uh, take an input parameter that contains radius u v division along the theta and the phi directions. Here we first get the position for all gray point by calling the sphere position method here. Sphere position methods. You can see we have defined a points. This point contains all the positions. We then draw two line segment for each unit grid. You can see here point zero to point one. And another one is point zero to point three. Another thing you note is we call the flat method. This method is used to create a new floating 32 array here using all the sub array concatenated into it. So we have to use this to create a new array 
use a flat mattress. Now we can save this file and close it. Next, we want to make some changes to the index.html file from dist folder. Open this file. First, we need to change the 12 to 13 because this is a 13 video series. Uh, we also need to change the title here to Sphere Wire Free. Uh, we want to add some style here. Uh, here we wanted to use the CSS grid layout to arrange our input parameters. Of course, you can also use the popular Twitter bootstrap for this purpose. This is the code. This code is a simple HTML code and nothing to do with the web GPU, so I will not discuss it here. Next, we need uh, to replace this part of the code. Here, we set up input parameters uh, field, include, uh, you can see, center, uh, radius, U division, and V division. Here, we just uh, set up input uh, parameters so user can specify the input. So now, we can save this file. Uh, next, we want to modify the Cedar code. Open the Cedar code from the SRC folder, the Cedar.ts. Uh, now, we don't have a color buffer, so the code becomes very simple. We can replace this code. You can see that the vertex Cedar only returns built in position. So they don't need to return the V color as before. In the fragment seeder, we directly define our Y-frame color. You can see here, the color is yellow color. So this seeder code is very simple. Now we can save this file and close it. Next, we need to make some changes to the min.ts file. Open this min.ts file from SRC folder. And we need to replace its content with the following code. Here we first introduce the create wireframe from the wireframe.ts file and the sphere wireframe data from vertex data.ts file. Inside this create 3D object measure. You first get the sphere wireframe data and then create a wireframe by calling this create wireframe methods. Next, we introduce some default input parameters. You can see here radius equal to 2, u equal to 20, v equal to 15, and so on. And then call this create 3D object to create the default wireframe. This part of the code allows the user to recreate a sphere wireframe by change the input parameter. Now we finish the modification to the main.ts file. Now we can save this file. Up to now we have finished all the programming. Now we can run the following command on the terminal window to bound our TypeScript file in pm run proud. Okay, the bound file is created successfully. Now we can click the go live link from this status bar area to open the Chrome Canary to view the sphere wireframe. So click this link. You can see the animated uh, the uh, sphere wireframe on this page. Now we can make uh, some changes to this parameter. For example, we move one unit up and we change the radius from two to one. And then click this redraw button. So we recreate a new sphere wireframe with new parameters. We can also click the camera control 
So use your more sparring to rotate the object and also move around and zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. So click animation again. We can get an animate sphere wireframe again. Now we have completed this example. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video. I will post the link for the source code below this video. You can click the link to download the source code. I will end this video here. In next video, I will show you how to create a cylinder wireframe. See you next time. Bye.